of the media speaks uh, jumping in with today's news. Now, I know a lot of you people are going to uh, immediately say, oh my God, you're not using your studio. Here's what's funny. I'm going to talk to my subscribers for a minute. If you're not a subscriber, then just skip ahead a minute. You'll be fine. Subscribers who donate to me at the correct views on Hotmail.com, and I thank you for doing so. Um, the lights that are in the studio the data cards the camera the everything this show gets a certain amount of money and it doesn't pay for everything that the show does so sometimes you don't get me in the studio and today is just such a day I am also mostly a one-man crew now. Christelle has uh, been doing very limited things on the show, as regular viewers will know. And time caught up with me, and guess what? I'm sitting in my living room. I am not in my studio. And guess what? I might not look as pretty. But guess what? My facts are as good as they ever are. So if you're here for facts, you got it made. If you're here because you love to look at my pretty face with three-point lighting, then you may have to wait till next time. Uh, friends, this is news that I thought needed to be attended to. NewYorkTimes.com, our source is the New York Times. Anybody see Dr. Strangelove? Ted Cruz starts to crack the GOP establishment's wall of opposition. Now, many of you know that uh, Ted Cruz has been like, if, 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 uh, if Ron Paul was libertarian, then Rand Paul would be libertarian light, and Ted Cruz would be libertarian really light. Um, I mentioned that because... There are things about Cruz that greatly alarm me. Not the least of which is, of course, that his wife is a mega banker. Um, and you, a regular viewer is, no, I do not bank. But above and beyond that, far more worrisome is this New York Times piece is praising him for taking money from the very people to whom we don't want tied into it. Do you realize the same bankers that donate to Hillary Clinton are the same bankers that the New York Times is praising here for supporting Cruz? This is not good. This does not make me want to vote for Cruz more. What this does is reminds me that Donald Trump has a lot of points, and he is not libertarian, and I am. However, there are some remarkable points that Trump makes, and one of them is very clear. Those that donate to you, to some degree, own. Well, if that is the case, then why are you not trusting Hillary? because she's owned by bankers. Why are you not trusting Jeb because he's owned by bankers? Why are you gonna go ahead and give Ted Cruz a pass? I know, I don't like this. I'll go on record. This is really making me now not want to vote for Cruz. And I'm gonna tell you why. Relains, uh, New York Times. Standing, strike, excuse me, striding up the sidewalk of one of New York's most affluent neighborhoods on Monday evening, S.C. Scott Sewell seemed an unlikely figure to be attending a Ted Cruz fundraiser. He's an oil industry executive. Well, a vast majority of the Republican elite uh, may remain bitterly opposed to him getting the nomination, but the thing is they're trying to cheat Trump is what they're trying to do. Um, Trump can beat Hillary for one thing. Cruz cannot. Um, a name recognition. Plain and simple. Now, I'm not saying that Trump is the best thing since a sliced bread, 
to give you some idea where I am politically, if I could have anybody that is currently a name of some kind to be president of the U.S., my first choice would be Walter E. Williams, and my second choice uh, would be Justin Amish, just so you know. However, we have the playing field that we have. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to cheat Trump and they're trying to bait libertarians to do it by getting them to side with Cruz. But Cruz is being backed by all the people that we already don't trust. Do you understand this? I've worded it like four ways now. We're working hard to consolidate a lot of support, Mr. Cruz told a reporter as he mingled. So what's he mean by that? I can tell you what he means by that. He means that uh, he's taking money from people that are going to own him. Andrew Puzder, chief executive conglomerate who owns Hardee's and Carl's Jr. supported both Mr. Romney on, uh, on, excuse me, on both campaigns. And he said, I've become a one-issue voter. Who can beat the Democrats? I understand that. Who can win? I understand that. But... Mr. Cruz's wife, who is, of course, tied into the banking elite who have hosed all of us, met on the 2000 Bush campaign and worked in the administration. Again, a big Bush supporter. Does that make you want to vote for them more? Anthony R. Dolan, Reagan's chief speechwriter, who is now part of Mr. Cruz's team. But Chad Sweet, Mr. Cruz's campaign chairman, his campaign chairman worked for Goldman Sachs and was chief of staff to Michael Chertoff, Homeland Security Secretary under George W. Bush. Does that make you want to vote for Cruz? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Anthony Court has all but left the media speaks. Uh, Kyle Phillips, the man who started the media speaks, has uh, basically left us. He's been useless. I love you, Kyle. Sorry, you've been useless. Um, they warned us about this. Both of them, by the way, were right. Mr. Cruz's campaign manager, Jeff Rowe, has also cultivated relationships with the relatively small universe of Republican strategists. In December, he phoned the lobbyist, Charles R. Black, Jr., a veteran Republican presidential campaign about arranging a meeting with Mr. Cruz. He was at a $1,000 a person happy hour at the Capitol Grill, and it was an event in uh, McLean, Virginia, home of Michael Adams, fandom of the Betchel Group executives. You go to the article for more on this. Do you realize what I'm telling you? He's getting money from all of the big GOP backers. He is getting money from everyone to whom we do not trust. And they're praising him for it. I'm going to vote for Rand if he is even still in this when it comes time for the Ohio uh, Republican vote. I'm registered as a libertarian, but I always change on the uh, primaries for obvious reasons. Um, I'm a libertarian at heart. Rand's going to get my vote, but uh, if I'm sorry, Cruz isn't. Cruz, I'm done with him after this article. I, Anthony Court will be very happy. He, he has won this. Uh, this uh, I told him. It wasn't even a debate. I told him that if Cruz looked like he was going in this direction, then I was going to go in the opposite direction of Cruz. And um, well, that's basically what happened. I, I will be doing Rand or Trump, although Gary Johnson is looking to win the Libertarian nomination, as is um, McAfee. So I'm not pledging to Trump, but I'm saying he's a likelihood, and I'm saying I'll pick him over Cruz. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not a socialist, not a fascist. But a bit of a national, a bit of a nationalist streak is exactly what this country needs, and I'm happy he's a nationalist. I am. Um, DailyCaller.com. Biden, the Second Amendment says that you can limit who can own a gun. Um, this was originally going to be one of my dumb D's of the day because the Second Amendment doesn't say anything like that at all. 
And there is nothing about the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment that even hints at what he's saying. He's either lying or he's simply stupid. Which one it is, I will leave it up to you, my humble listener. But I'll say this. He's wrong and he's an idiot. Listen to this. Uh, Vice President Joe Biden says that the Second Amendment says that you can limit who can own a gun. Well, if you read the Second Amendment, you don't have to take my word for it. Look it up. You are on the internet. You will find that I'm right. In an interview with CNN's Goya Borger on Monday, Biden said the people who are criminals shouldn't have guns. People who are schizophrenic and have mental illness shouldn't have guns. Now, pause. This is why you listen to the correct views. Schizophrenia is one thing. I get it. But the DSM, which is the manual for diagnosing mental illnesses, has no scientific basis to it whatsoever. But what it does is uses symptoms to say that you have a disease, and then they give you drugs based on a chemical imbalance when it's not a chemical imbalance at all, and there's absolutely no scientific proof to prove that it is. Um, the DSM is saying that if you disagree with your government's direction, then you have a mental illness. If you do not accept homosexuality, which I don't care one way or the other, but if you don't accept, guess what? You have a mental illness. So when they say that, they're setting it up to broaden what mental illness officially is and turning it into anyone that doesn't agree with what they're saying can't own a gun because you're mentally ill, right? That's, that's going to be the way they turn this around. The Second Amendment says on the matter, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Biden was asked by Borger, so does Bernie Sanders have to change position on gun manufacturers in or, or manufacturers in order to have your support and you out there campaigning for him? Should he be the nominee? Biden replied, no, what Bernie has to say about the Second Amendment says, which he has of late, the Second Amendment says that you can limit who can own a gun. The people who are criminals shouldn't have guns. Again, criminals, what? Because you smoke a joint? They're painting with such a broad brush here that when you hear criminals shouldn't own guns, you immediately say, oh yeah, man, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> criminal is what? Somebody who got a speeding ticket? Do you get it? Do you get what they're doing? I think you do. Were you jaywalking? Did you get a DUI? These are going to be the kind of ridiculous things you see. And this is why I, that's why I do these shows. Like, plain and simple. This is why I do these shows. This is from the sunsentinel.com. Mask gunman shot dead by restaurant employee. Someone needs to show Joe Biden this article. It's by Rebecca Picardo. The tables turn for a masked gunman who was shot and killed by an employee on the Miramar restaurant who he attempted to rob, police said. Just before 6 a.m. Wednesday, a man wearing a ski mask and gloves walked into Captain Max Seafood Restaurant, 3700 State Road 7, and brandished a gun. After an exchange of words with the gunman, a restaurant employee used his own weapon to stop the attempted robbery, said Maramar police spokesman Tania Roos. The restaurant employee fired several shots and killed the suspect, she said. Oh, but I thought guns only took innocent life. Do you realize two things? First of all, that guns save more innocent lives than our loss do to them. The other thing that you might not realize, and I guess you probably should, is that if you factor out gang violence, the amount of gun violence in this country is incredibly low among all races. You don't know those two things then that's why you tuned in that's why i hope you're hitting subscribe because both of those are true you can look them up if you doubt them i have no reason to lie to you um police are still investigating whether the masked man fired his weapon before he was shot the unidentified employee was seen getting into the back of a police car on wednesday night 
as the body of a gunman remained inside the restaurant. Police were waiting for a search warrant to inspect the body for identification, and no one was injured. Luckily, the only, sus only the suspect was hurt, but there are other situations where innocent bystanders could have been hurt. Yeah, such as nobody having a licensed gun and the gunman just going nuts and shooting people. This is another gun win. This is another reason why Biden is wrong and Trump and Gary Johnson and Rand Paul are right. Who would I like out of all of them? Rand. Uh, why do I say that? Because I voted for Gary Johnson last cycle, but Gary Johnson isn't in favor of border control, and I am. Um, Alt Market, Brandon Smith, Ecological Panic, the new rationale for globalist cultists. Um, we have to realize up front, right off the bat, right off the rip, that there is no global warming. There is no climate change caused by man. None of that is happening. So understand that first. Faith is an ideology based on a desire for power over others and the need to feel personally superior without any legitimate accomplishment is perhaps the most dangerous state of being an individual or a society can adapt. The mindset called zealotry, and it's an integral element of cultism and an extreme result of the elitist side of faith. Zealotry and cultism are not limited to the realm of the religious. Zealotry is a clever devil hiding in the woodwork of any political or academical construct, and this includes the scientific community when it strays away from empirical logic and honest data into a world of pseudoscience and social engineering. Anthropogenic, which is man-made global warming, which Bernie Sanders believes in and which is not happening, is quickly becoming the overreaching rationale for almost every policy toward global centralization. It says, as well as a scapegoat, for nearly every major crisis, from mass shootings to the rise of ISIS to the geopolitical shifting in economic structures. Global warming has been projected as a magical force, deviously underlying everything. But get this. Climate research, in, research institutions like the Climate Research Unit at the University of East Anglia, NASA, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have refused for decades to release the raw data behind their experiments, which they say prove the existence of man-made global warming. In other words, they take data that you're not allowed to see and you're supposed to trust them as they tax you and say that even though you can't see how they came to their conclusion, you're supposed to believe that their conclusion is right and pay up appropriately. That's exactly what it says, friends. For many years, the CRU refused to release any data that was not first processed to reflect its own desired outcome and still refuses to release emails that might prove that climate scientists had rigged data in the warning model. Professor Phil Jones of the CRU in charge of maintaining data sets famously told the Australian climate scientist in 2004, even if WMO agrees, I will not pass on the data. We have 25 or so years invested in the work. Why should I make the data available to you when your aim is to try and find something wrong with it? In other words, he knows his data is wrong and he is afraid to allow you to see it because then you will no longer believe in global warming and he will lose all of the money that has been given to him to lie and say that it exists. And his life will prove to be the absolute waste of medical and scientific, I should say, time that it really is. When opposition became more intense in reaction to the CRU secret of data, the organization tried to say this. We are not in a position to supply data for a particular country not covered by the example agreements referred to earlier. 
is we have never had sufficient resources to keep track of the exact source of each individual monthly value. In other words, they lied. Since the 1980s, we have merged the data we have received into existing series or begun new ones. So it is impossible to say if all stations within a particular country or if an individual record should be freely available. In other words, what they have done is they have testing units set up throughout the entire world. If a certain area gets warmer, then they are going to go ahead and include that into the model that you are not allowed to see. The rest of the globe, which is proving that nothing is warming, does not get included into the data set that you are not allowed to see. And this is the quote unquote science that they are, are taxing you on. And if you have a problem with that, that's good. That's, that's damn good. Because that proves that there is a part of your brain that is still working. Because if you still believe in global warming, do me a favor, look up climate gate. Look up Lord Moncton, global warming. Look up the sentence. Planet has not warmed in 15 years. Depending on the study, type this in. Planet has not warmed in 18 years. Leave me a comment and let me know what you found. Because I know what you're going to find. You're going to find out that you're listening to the correct use. Um, friends, do me a favor. Look up the work of Kyle. Or look, I guess now, look up the work of David Lake and I. Uh, you can find him, uh, D. Lake from Fresno, of course, uh, the correct view is at YouTube.com. If you are within about a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, do make sure that you um, look up change transportation. Because if you're going to catch a, a taxi or and they're even cheaper than Uber, let them know about what you're paying to get where you need to go. And then call change transportation and let them know you heard about it from the correct view. You're going to get a discount. You're going to be delighted that you took the time. Well, listen to this. I do the news from the science front. I don't know how many of you know this, but I do it every Saturday on and the media speaks 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I've been swarmed with uh, science lately. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get to this um, just on my regular show here at the correct views dailymail.co.uk, the spit test that can predict how long you shall live. Levels of an antibody in the body fall the nearer a person gets to death. This is interesting. The saliva test, we could predict how long you've got left to live. Lemmy could have used this. Researchers found that levels of a particular antibody fails the nearer a person gets to death. To reach their conclusion, they took samples from 639 adults in 1995 and tracked them over 19 years. They found that the levels of a secretory immunoglobin, which is I, little g, capital A, fell the nearer the person got to death. Antibodies are used by the body to fight infection and are secreted by white blood cells. And the researchers said that the chemical appears to be a marker of mortality risk and is much less evasive than blood sampling. Now, I, I, I'm one of those people that like to look at things in the other order. If you can find out what antibody is bothering your immune system, then you can up that antibody and quite possibly turn this around. Um, this is interesting. And the researchers said that the chemical appears to be a marker. Like I said, testing levels of IgA could be used as a way of looking for the overall health by professionals as part of the general checkup. The research was published by the journal PLOS, a PLOS 1. A Dr. Anna Phillips from the University of Birmingham said there are a number of factors that can affect how well we produce antibodies and maintain their levels. You want to know some ways to do it? Look up how to almost never get sick. It's on my site. You'll find the vitamin regimen that I've been taking that turned me and uh, a person that's almost never sick. I used to be someone that was always sick. They used to call me Sickly Sam. Um, there are some that have no control over, such as age, heredity, heritability, thank you, 
or illness, but our general state of health can also affect their levels, stress, diet, exercise, alcohol, smoking. So basically, it's a spit test that can let you know roughly if you're if you're about to kick the bucket and maybe even what you can do to turn it around. So look that up and uh, get back to me if you find those sorts of things interesting, because I don't know if you do or not, but I can tell you I do, and they will always be part of this show. Amen? Uh, two more stories to get to. This is from the Rutherford Institute. What's in store for our freedoms in 2016? More of everything that we don't want. Written by John Whitehead. And of course, uh, as George Santiano wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. In a Harold Ramis classic 1993 comedy, Groundhog Day, TV weatherman Phil Connors, who is played by Bill Murray, of course, is forced to live the same day over and over again until he not only gains some insight into his life, but changes his priorities. Similarly, as I illustrate in my book, John Whitehead writes, The Battlefield of America, The War on the American People. We are in the emerging American police state. We find ourselves reliving the same set of circumstances over and over again. So here are a list of what we can look forward to. More surveillance in 2016. The surveillance state is alive and well and kicking and privacy uh, are going being kicked to shreds in America. Whether you're walking through a store, driving your car, checking email, or talking to friends and family on the phone, you can be sure that some government agency, whether the NSA or some other entity, will still be listening in and tracking your behavior. And again, a lot of people don't care about the Fourth Amendment. Okay, then why do we care about the First Amendment? Why should we have a right to speak? Why should we have a Second Amendment? Why, as a matter of fact, why should we have any of them? If they can take the amendment away that is just convenient for you not to care about, then they can take away all of the other amendments that you do care about. Do you see how this works? It really isn't that freaking complicated. More militarized police. Americans will continue to be rendered powerless in the face of militarized police. In early America, government agents were not permitted to enter one's home without permission or in a deceitful manner. Citizens could resist arrest when a police officer tried to restrain them without proper justification or warrant. Daring to dispute a warrant with a police officer today who is armed with high-tech military weapons would be nothing short of suicidal. Moreover, it says, as police forces across the country continue to be transformed into extensions of the military, Americans are finding that their once peaceful communities are transformed into military outposts. They can take your money just because you have money on you. Do you understand that? This is a war on cash. That you can get pulled over with money that is legally yours and they can just take it because they don't like the fact that you have cash. We can look for more police shootings of unarmed citizens that speak for itself more so-called terrorist attacks because basically they're looking for the wrong people in the wrong places. Despite the government's endless propaganda about the threat of terrorism, maybe even in the wake of the shootings in San Bernardino and Paris, statistics show that you are 17,600 times more likely to die from heart disease in a terrorist attack. Um, most costly wars, the military industrial complex that has advanced the U.S remain at war year after year, and then it's the very entity that will continue to profit the most from America's expanding military empire. So we're going to see more of that. More attempts by the government to identify, target, and punish so-called domestic extremists in much the same way that the USA Patriot Act was used as a front to advance the surveillance state. The government's anti-extremism program will, in many cases, be utilized to render otherwise lawful, nonviolent activities as potentially extremist. More SWAT team raids. More than 80% of American communities have their own SWAT teams, and that's been abused. We've covered that repeatedly here. More erosions of private property. Um, private property means little at a time when SWAT teams and other government agents can invade your home, break down your doors, kill your dog, wound or kill you and damage your furnishings, and then terrorize your family. And there's a link to it in the article. Likewise, if the government officials can find you and arrest you for growing vegetables, which they do, 
praying with friends in your living room, which they do, or installing solar panels on your roof and raising chickens in your backyard, then what is private property? A more debt. Of course, everyone knows 180, excuse me, 18.1 trillion and rising of the current government debt will never get that paid back. More government contractors getting money while the private sector, of course, goes under. More overcriminalization, which is uh, everything. I mean, ever, literally everything. It says the government's tendency towards militarization and overcriminalization, making everything illegal. Everyday behavior become targets of regulation and prohibition, and it resulted in Americans getting arrested for making and selling unpasteurized goat cheese. Cultivating certain types of orchids, yes, you've been arrested for all of this. Feeding a whale, holding Bible studies in their own homes, and picking their kids up from school. So I'm going to make sure I go out and do all of them because I'm not capitulating to anyone. Uh, more strip searches and the denigration of body integrity. Now, this is one of my most viewed videos when I covered this, and I'm glad it is because what we're talking about now are police that are practically raping people. The Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was intended to protect the citizenry from being subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures by government agents. While the literal purpose of the amendment is to protect our property and our bodies from unwarranted government intrusion, the moral intention behind it is to protect our human dignity. Unfortunately, court rulings undermining the Fourth Amendment and justifying invasive strip searches have left us powerless against police. Um, more injustice, because Americans can no longer rely on the courts to mete out justice. We know that. Um, Americans have no protection against police abuse whatsoever. Um, more political spectacles. Americans continue to naively buy into the idea that politics matter as if there's a really a difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. And of course, we've gone over repeatedly that there is not. More drones, that's, that's a given. More dumbed down, locked down public schools because they have become training grounds, or schools have, we know this, for compliant citizens. And of course, we spend more than the rest of the world on education, about $115,000 per student. We rank 36th in the world when it comes to being able to read. A lot of that's from Common Core. More ignorance about our rights. Americans have no idea what their rights are. We're going to have more prisons because there's a lot of money to be made in locking people up for nothing when you're getting grants from taxes. So you're paying to lock up your own kids. More corruption. If there is an absolute maxim in which the federal government seems to operate is the American taxpayer always gets ripped off. And uh, we've seen this through the bloated government agencies like the NSA. A more censorship with that, that's common sense right there and you think why how, how would you even found this show if you didn't know that, that was correct that is a correct view first amendment activities are being pummeled punched kicked choked chained and generally gagged all across the country the reasons for such censorship vary widely from political correctness safety concerns or bullying but the point is as benjamin franklin said freedom of speech is the principal pillar of free government and it is being taken away from us more fascism as a princeton university survey indicates our elected officials especially those in the nation's capital represent the interest of the rich and powerful rather than the average citizen and we are no longer a representative republic and no of course not we know that already a more fear because we're being fed fear is an excuse for them to take our rights that is what 2016 is looking at. And yeah, you know what? I'm talking into a camera in my living room because my studio is tied up. And I'm doing this because it matters. It matters a lot. And if you don't see why it matters, then go ahead and look at the way our culture is dying around us. Listen to Drake, listen to Nickelback, and you can tell there's no talent in our art. Look at our politicians. There is no honesty in our politicians. There is no justice in our laws. We are living in a fallen nation, folks, and if we do not fix it, we are doomed. Friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum 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 dumbass dum dee of the day. It is true. 
Uh, for those of you that don't know, of course, we do the dunce cap of the month once a month, and we do the dumdy of the day once a day. <laughs> It is a manufacturing defect. A simple manufacturing defect, of course, that has uh, cited for a toy of an F-16, which is a fighter jet singing a creepy Islamic chant. Talk about it, dumb D. Uh, Baz Bizpack review, Nicole Haas. For some families, Christmas morning suddenly became a little less merry when their children's F-16 military, military toys started singing an Islamic chant. Yes, uh, we, we rape women, please don't bomb us, is probably their chant. On the outside, the toy looks like fun little fighter jets for a perfect thing to go along with your G.I. Joe. But families have reported hearing something very different from engine noises when the sound is triggered. The sound people were hearing was an Arabic prayer, a chant used on pilgrimage to Mecca, an Islamic leader told King 5 News. You know, Mecca, the place that Saudi Arabia doesn't let the uh, refugees go to because they don't give a shit about their own people. Yes, I said it. One family who received the toy described opening it Christmas morning. We put the batteries in. We didn't get what we expected, the boy's uncle Bjorn Thorpe said. I do respect other religions, but it's not the right situation to have in a children's toy. He's from Sweden. I don't know if he is or not. The toy company, oh, I, I, I made a joke about white people. I wasn't politically correct. The toy company, Wolvol, blames the mistake on a manufacturer defect, saying that the wrong sound effect must have been mistakenly added. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> Wolvol pointed out its great reviews on Amazon, but other disappointed customers have already begun posting their disappointment of the same problem. Plays Middle Eastern enchant or prayer, not good, one review said. Plane looks okay and moves around, but the chanting is annoying and creepy, and you can't turn off the sound, writes another. Thorpe, however, doesn't seem overly concerned about any of it. He told King Five he'd just like to get reimbursed so he can get his nephew a new plane. Well, no, you must be a politically incorrect bastard if you don't want Islamic chant being fed into your kid's ear when he tries to play with an airplane. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangie signing off. Do me a favor. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. One of the best writers extant today you will find with him. Also, do me a favor and uh, donate to the show if you can. Really, it would, it would really help. Uh, the Correct View is on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, friends. Good night. God bless.